You know, we keep getting a lot of comments where people are saying, hey, you should build a silver castle with all your silver. Hey, you, uh, what are you going to do with this series? Hey, I want to see some more inbred yak babies. Well, today, people, I and the Echo in the room are going to be answering your burning questions. All the questions except for the one about the inbred yak babies, your interest in those babies is a little bit concerning to me. Anyhow, let us begin. Now, unfortunately, I do have some awful news to start the episode today. Our slaves, Olive Branch and Bacchus, are breaking up after Olive Branch got her pregnant, mind you. How disgusting! But unfortunately, things like this do happen as we do not live in a perfect world. Even if Olive Branch is going to be a deadbeat, the rest of us will help Bacchus take care of that baby. And just to add to the list of our problems, we currently have a heat wave ongoing. Looks like we're going to have to build some passive coolers so we don't all die of heat stroke. But if you thought our problems stopped there, you're very much wrong, as we now have a large group of pirates who are coming to blow up our walls and slaughter everyone and take our precious lumber. But naturally, of course, as always, you know we're not about to let anyone just waltz right in and slaughter all of us, so we all gathered around the wall that they were destroying so that we could pepper their asses with lead balls. Unfortunately, though, we were outnumbered quite a bit, so we began making a strategic retreat towards our defenses while the pirates continued destroying a lot of our settlement. But we couldn't let them destroy our home. We met the pirates out there in our cornfield, and blood was shed. We rained hellfire down upon them. Thankfully, we killed just enough of the pirates to make them retreat, but we knew that they would be back, most likely in much larger numbers. Would we be ready the next time that this happened? A bit of a spoiler alert, no, we won't be ready as we only have so many members and our technology essentially consists of cannons and flintlock weaponry. You know, there's no machine guns or anything like that in this, so uh, we're just going to have to do the best we can. A few days later, we had began reconstruction on the town, but everyone was still extremely on edge from the battle. Thunder was so on edge, in fact, he had a mental break and decided to try and murder one of our new Thromboian recruits. Naturally, if we could stop one logger from killing another, we would do so, so we quickly knocked Thunder out and then took him back to his house. But I'll be damned if a few days later we didn't get another fair-sized raid from a bunch of Thromboian tribes people who were looking to murder us. You know, the pirates caught us with our pants down, but this time we had a belt on and we weren't about to let these Thromboians jerk our pants off. We met the Thromboians in the town square and began firing upon them. Even our slaves picked up arms and began just cutting them up with axes and really anything else that they could find. And lucky for us, at the end of the day, we made it out without any casualties. Many of our people were injured, our slaves as well as our loggers, but nobody died, so it's a win. But now that all the shitty news is out of the way, let's talk about some good stuff. Bacchus is about to give birth. Ah yes, joyous day. Finally, a new member of the family to love and care for, and more importantly, to teach how to cut down trees so we can make a profit. Birch, as our leader, has named the child Tree, a fitting name for a child born in a logging empire, I feel. But, you know, we've talked a whole lot about getting raided and babies being born, and during this time we've also been working on our inventory for our largest trade yet. So the current inventory is as follows. 108 drums, 35 wood plate helmets, 16 wood plate armor, 12 wooden grand sculptures, 9 wooden short bows, 6 wooden reef curve bows, 4 wooden clubs, 3 harpsichords, 2 pilas, and 2 wooden grape bows. Now, naturally, of course, we didn't make the weapons, we only made the armor, the art, harpsichords, etc., etc., but we did get those from a raid, and they're just going to take up space on our shelves, so we might as well sell them. And this caravan's going to take quite a while because we have so much inventory and we have many, many stops to make. So it'll be a little bit before we see them again. 
In the meantime, though, Bacchus decided to use the nice devil strand we grew over the summer to make a nice feathered hat for Birch. Every great emperor has a crown, and this devil strand hat would suffice as Birch's. And finally, after many, many days had passed, our caravan had returned home. And after all was said and done, we returned home with 25,302 silver. We also ended up returning home with a little bit of our inventory. We still had our harpsichords, as no one had enough money to buy them. Luckily, a trader came by, but even they only had enough silver to buy a couple of the harpsichords, so we were still stuck with the majority. And by this point, we had an unbelievable wealth. We had well over 100,000 silver in our bank, not including the gold and jade that we had as well. And Birch's greedy ass finally decided it was time to splurge a little bit. He put a masterwork harpsichord in the dining room, and we also decided to put some wonderful grand sculptures around town. We decided to put this one grand sculpture right in town center so everyone could enjoy it as they were going about their day-to-day -day lives of producing products and whatnot. And I wish that I could tell you what the artwork was about, what stories it hold within, but I was too lazy to check and just kind of put it out there and thought it looked nice. And you know, I think it's finally time to talk about what we're going to spend our silver on. I think we're going to buy a... oh, oh no, what's, what's this? So we currently have a gargantuan-sized pirate raid coming to try and slaughter us, led by none other than Birch's brother. I don't know if we're prepared for this, nor do I know if we'll survive. Bacchus had a good idea and decided instead of fighting, she would run to Baby Tree to try and protect her. While Bacchus was running to protect Baby Tree, our loggers engaged in combat with the pirate horde. Things were going well at first, but then we became quickly overwhelmed by the pirates. And these pirates weren't just packing flintlock weaponry, they also had these massive cannons that were able to be carried and fired at us. We were unaware that they even had these until unfortunately Kibby was hit by one and she died. The pirates also threw bombs at our feet and we were unable to escape in time and those went off as well, killing one colonist and injuring several others. Knowing that we would all almost definitely die here, Happy Oak made a bold move. In an act of kindness, he made haste toward Bacchus's cottage in the hillside. He quickly threw his rifle to the ground for her to protect her baby. Bacchus picked up the rifle with shock in her eyes as she was nothing but a slave in this logging empire. She couldn't believe what he had done for her. Happy Oak ran out the door with his spear clutched in his hands to fight off any pirates that would stop Bacchus from escaping with Baby Tree. He quickly encountered the Pirate King who was leading the raid and he engaged him in combat with his spear. He stuck his spear through the Pirate King's torso and killed him but unfortunately was shot quickly after. However, his sacrifice had bought Bacchus and Tree enough time to run through the northern wall of the city and make an escape. And though she was followed by pirates for a few moments, a few shots from Happy Oak's rifle seemed to scare them off, and she was able to make a daring escape with her baby. Unfortunately, however, Birch would not be as lucky as Bacchus. There would be no daring escape for him, and he died out in the cold winter ground. Birch's death was inevitable. Man's greed for silver and material things on this desolate rim world leads to nothing but pain and suffering. But what about Happy Oak and the other loggers? Well, they still enslaved people and they were part of Birch's greed as well, his greedy empire. And the slaves that died, well, at least they found some type of release in death. But truly, was anyone innocent? Even the Thromboian slaves and pirate slaves that we had, they were still Thromboians and pirates who were coming here to kill us, to take our silver. Their interests were still in nothing but greed. And truly, we have all paid for our sin of greed with our lives. Even taking something that this beautiful planet, this rim world creates, such as trees, we cut it down and we turn it into timber, we turn it into armor, and art and all these other things simply to make silver. Yes, silver. Silver, the thing that funds these wars between the other settlements like the Thromboian tribes, the British, the French, the Prussians, everyone on this planet. Nothing but silver goes through their minds. And I hear you say, Rat Knight, but that's what this entire series was about. You know, that's, that's a good point. And also, Rat Knight, why has Bacchus been spared? She was also greedy. Well, maybe she has been spared by the universe or this rim world to make something better out of tree. But Rat Knight, if that's the case, then shouldn't Happy Oak be spared as well? Hmm. That's a good point.